Today on BRS TV, we have our fifth episode of the How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium series. This episode, we're going to install an aquarium controller onto our system. Because this series is aimed at beginners, there's going to be a heavy focus on how much this would have saved us if we had purchased the system from the beginning, as well as a heavy focus on how much redundancy and safety it adds to our system. So a lot of people out there think a system like this isn't much more than a couple fancy power bars with some built-in timers. The uh, thing is, it's much more than that. Uh, it's going to be your temperature controller, pH controller, and ORP controller, as well as an alarm system, which ties it all into one convenient package. It really will save a considerable amount of money compared to buying all these components individually, as well as add a lot of redundancy to the tank, which can help you avoid a lot of those common tank disasters. This is the ReefKeeper Plus package. Uh, it comes with two power bars, your controller display, a ORP and pH controller, as well as a temperature probe and a pH probe. Uh, let's go install it on the tank. So the first step is to get all of our equipment mounted into the cabinet. Right now we got a pretty good cord mess going on down there. And there's not really a lot we can do about the cords. However, we can remove all those bulky timers and controllers, as well as get everything organized a little bit better. So we're going to mount all this equipment on the far wall of the cabinet over here where it will be out of the way for when we eventually want to add a sump to the tank. The only piece of equipment that won't be mounted inside there will be the controller display which we'll want to mount on the front of the cabinet for easy access. So let's get to work. All right, well, we were able to mount all the equipment into the cabinet and you can see that most of the cords are routed quite a bit better. We're also able to get rid of all those bulky timers and controllers. And lastly, we were able to label all of our outlets. So we had eight controllable outlets on the first power strip. We went ahead and installed the two power cords for the light. We also plugged in our refugium light and our heater. I wanted to use the other four outlets to control our auto top-off system, fans, power heads, and protein skimmer. So by using those two power strips that come with the Reef Keeper system, we would have already saved ourselves about 30 bucks if we had bought this system before wasting money on the power strips that we had before. So now that we have everything installed, we're going to go ahead and program our Reef Keeper. I can do this through the controller display itself, otherwise on a PC. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it on a PC because it's a little bit more entertaining. So rather than taking the whole Reef Keeper system over to the computer, uh, we're just going to program it with this laptop here. Keep in mind, if you don't have access to a computer like this, you can go ahead and program everything through the controller display, which is also very easy to program. So we went ahead and downloaded and installed the MyReef software. All we need to do now is go ahead and connect the Reef Keeper with the included USB cord. So once you have everything plugged in, you can see all your modules over here on the left-hand side. First thing we're going to do is rename our PC4 so we can tell them apart. We have the first one labeled Power 1, the second strip Power 2. You can change this with the setup button over here. So in power bar one, we're going to install the tank lights, the refugium light, and the heater. If you select power bar one, you can see all of these stacked on top of each other here. So in the tech light fixture that we're using here, which has six bulbs, there's one power outlet that controls two bulbs and one that controls four. We're going to use those two outlets to create a dusk and dawn effect using the controller. So let's set up the first channel which will be our morning lights. Locate channel 1 over here and we'll go ahead and hit the setup button which will open up a new window for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is relabel this channel so I know what it is. I'll call it lights 1 and I'm going to select an auto mode. Under functions we'll select lights other. I want them to turn on at roughly 9 a.m. and turn off at 5 p.m. And for now I'll leave sure on unchecked. I do want them to be on every day of the week and I'm going to leave the alarms and standbys alone for now. So we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing with the second set of lights and the refugium light with the exception that with the second set of lights I'm going to have them come on at 10 a.m. and turn off at 4 p.m. for that dust to dawn effect that we talked about and with the refugium I'm going to have it come on after all the other tank lights are out to help stabilize the pH at night. That means that there's basically three timers that we don't need and these big bulky things can be put in the closet or better yet 
we would have never purchased them in the beginning and it would save <coughs> us at least 60 bucks. So the last outlet we're going to program on this power strip is going to be the heater and it's a bit different. Go ahead and select the auto and then the function is going to be the heater. We're going to put our set point at 78 degrees. Below that you're going to see something labeled hysteresis. Uh, this is going to be the range in which your heater will turn on or off. It's automatically set at 0.1, meaning that if our set point is at 78 degrees, it will turn on if it's at 77.9 or turn off if it reaches 78.1. So some of you are probably thinking, doesn't my heater have its own thermostat? Well, technically it does. However, they're generally pretty cheaply made and allow for much larger temperature fluctuations than most of us would like. And on top of that, they fail all the time. I would personally wager that heater failures are the single largest cause of equipment related tank crashes there is. And if you think about it, really our entire tank and all the money and time that we have invested in it is reliant upon that single $30 piece of equipment never failing. We're going to need some redundancy on this. A good external temperature controller will give us that redundancy and protection we're looking for. However, a good one costs about 90 bucks and a great one costs around 150 bucks. However, with our Reef Keeper, it has that temperature controller already built in, so we can save ourselves yet another 90 bucks and have that redundancy and protection that we wanted. So the next thing we're going to set up on the Reef Keeper is going to be our auto top off system. Again, we're going to select auto. However, this time we're going to select controller under the function. Because we also dose Kalkwasser in the auto top off, we want the controller to shut off power in case it ever gets stuck in the on position. This will prevent us from having an overdose of Kalkwasser. Under the sensor port, go ahead and select the SL1 with the pH function. We want the auto top off safety measure to kick in at 8.5. The way we are going to do this is set the pH at 8.4 with a hysteresis of 0.1. This means our auto top off will shut off if the pH reaches 8.5 and it won't turn back on until it falls below 8.3. So I just wanted to point out that the reason that we set this up at 8.5 instead of something a bit lower like 8.3 is because we're not actually trying to control the pH of the aquarium here. What we're trying to do is protect ourselves from a Kelkwasser overdose from an auto top off system failure. So in this case, I really wouldn't want the system turning off and on the auto top off system if the pH probe, say, were to get slightly out of calibration. Only if the auto top off system were to fail and get stuck in the on position. So the pH controller that's built into our reef keeper here basically replaces that external pH controller that we had on the auto top off system before and saved us yet another $189. The next item we're going to set up on our controller is the fan. Some reefers have their fans on all the time. Personally, I want to set it up so it only turns on if the tank is beginning to overheat. The reason for that is the fans really add a lot of evaporation to the tank and I frankly don't want all of that humidity in my house. So we'll select auto again and under function there is a fan option. I'll put the set point at 78.5 and by default the hysteresis is 0 0.2. We select 78.5 as the set point because we don't want it fighting the heater as they both turn back off and on. And I'll leave the alarm and standbys alone. So basically what we've done here is use the Reef Keeper as yet another temperature controller which will make sure that our fans only on when it needs to be. Hopefully that will reduce the amount of evaporation as well as humidity in the house and it will reduce the demand on our reverse osmosis deionization system which will save us some money on resin and filters and lastly the heater won't be on as much so it will save us some money on the electricity. So not everybody would purchase a temperature controller for this purpose but if you did it would save us yet another $90. For our power heads, we decided to use a standard outlet strip and we're going to plug that directly in the Reef Keeper. Uh, this will allow us to use one outlet on the Reef Keeper. Uh, if you have the available outlets, there is a wave maker function as well. Uh, this time we're going to not use it. Uh, however, we can still use it in the standby mode the way we're setting it up.
All right, when setting up your pumps, go ahead and select auto again. And then for the function, there's a pump other. And then at night, we definitely want the pumps on. And then just hit OK to save. For our last available outlet, we're going to go ahead and plug in our skimmer. So when setting up our skimmer, we're going to select auto again. And then for the function, skimmer. And just hit OK to save. All right, so the preliminary setup is done on all of our outlets now. So we're going to go back and set up all of our standbys and alarms. I will start with the standby. Standby temporarily turns a few things off, and there's a variety of reasons why you'd want to do that. Uh, we're going to set one up for feeding time. Reed, do you have any idea what you'd like to turn off during the standard feeding time? Well, I'm going to turn off the power heads while feeding. Uh, it helps the fish to find the food much easier, and a lot of times I like to target feed the corals. We're also going to shut off the skimmer during feeding time. That way it doesn't go crazy and send a bunch of microbubbles into the tank. If we're feeding coral foods or other additives, we don't want the skimmer removing it right away. So setting up a standby mode is pretty easy. We're just going to use the power head channel. Then just go to standby setup. Standby 1 will pop up. We want the pumps to stay off for about 10 minutes during feeding time. So go ahead and enter 10 minutes and save. Then we're going to hit the standby 1 button. Make sure it's off during the standby mode and hit OK. We also want to turn the skimmer off during this time, so we're going to go ahead and select standby 1 again. Uh, make sure it's selected as off during this period. Uh, we want the skimmer to be off for about 30 minutes. Our current standby is selected for 10, so we're going to put 20 minutes in the standby delay and just hit OK to save. All right, now for the fun part, we're going to set up all of our alarms. One of the nice things about an aquarium controller is it has the ability to actually let you know if something's wrong with the tank, which might otherwise go unnoticed. For instance, if a heater were to fail, you probably wouldn't notice right away, and the only reason you'd even figure it out is probably because the tank is starting to look pretty grim. An aquarium controller can actually set off an audible or visual alarm, and can even turn on or off other equipment based on that alarm. The first alarm I'm going to set up actually is if the heater were to fail in the off position, in which case the tank would continually get cooler. To do that, we're going to select the RKL option over to the left, and then Setup. And then over on the left, we'll select Alarms, and I want ID 1. I do want it to flash and beep at me if this alarm is ever triggered. I will select Eye Temp, and I want it to trigger if the temperature ever falls below 77 degrees. Hit apply and save. I think we should also set up an alarm for the pH and on top off as well. I agree. It's really nice that the pH controller on the reef keeper will prevent the auto top off system from overdosing Kelkwasser if it were to fail. However, it's unlikely I would ever know that this happened unless we set up an alarm. And I do want to know that it happened so I can go ahead and look into the auto top off system and see what failed. So this is how we're going to set up an alarm for that. So we're going to select alarm ID 2. We do want to flash and beep. Under the device, we'll select the SL1 and pH. We want the alarm to be triggered if the pH goes above 8.5, which means that the pH controller was triggered to turn off the auto top off system. Hit apply and save. We should also set an alarm to let us know if the tank is overheating. We should. Let's set up an alarm to go off if the fan is no longer able to keep up and the tank's temperature continues to rise. I'm going to have it go off about 79 degrees. So I mentioned earlier that you can use these alarms to control equipment as well. In this case, if the fan isn't able to keep up with the rising temperature of the tank because it's a particularly hot day, or maybe your chiller or home's air conditioner failed, we don't want the tank temperature to continue to rise and put it at risk. So what I'm going to do is have a portion of the lights turn off if the alarm for the tank temperature ever goes off. So I've already set up the alarm 3 to go off if the tank temperature gets too high. So I've opened up the main lights outlet. We'll select uh, alarm 3 here, and we want it to be off if the alarm ever goes off. Now I don't want the lights flickering off and on as it hovers around 79 degrees. So what I'll do is select the sure on over here, which will stop the lights from turning on for about 10 to 15 minutes 
in between cycles. So this feature really does have the possibility to save the tank from complete devastation, particularly on really hot days. And the only way that we could have achieved this added protection is to add yet a third temperature controller, which is really beginning to be pretty ridiculous. So the Reef Keeper would have saved us yet another $90. So in the end, the Reef Keeper really does come out to about half the cost if we purchase everything individually. Uh, it really does add a lot of redundancy as well, which would be tough to afford otherwise. Right. Even if you only use it for half the things that we talked about, you can see how it's so much more than a couple of power bars with timers that many people think it is. Frankly, I can't even imagine setting up a tank without a controller like this nowadays. All the protections it provides will almost certainly protect us from some type of disaster over the next few years, which makes it basically priceless. So that wraps up today's episode. In our next episode, we're going to add a sump to the tank and get all this clutter off the back of the tank and hide it in our sump down below. If you want to be notified when this comes out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or newsletter. Thank you for